Following on from the previous video, we're trying to understand why L'Hopital's rule works and, uh, and I, I asked you to be able to recognize that whenever you see this, you can simply jump to this. Um, you, you've got to train yourself to be able to recognize this or, or this. The minute you see anything like this, then you can jump to this. Or, or whenever you see this, you can jump to this. So now let's, let's try and understand why L'Hopital's rule works. So remember, in order for us to, to ap apply L'Hopital's rule, we would need to require we will require that you have zero over zero, meaning uh, meaning that this thing here will be zero, this thing here will be zero. So whenever you have a scenario where it's zero over zero, then you can apply L'Hopital's rule. By the way, we we will leave this for another time. Okay. So for the time being, we require um, we re we require you to have zero over zero. Then and only then can you apply this rule here. So. For you to have zero over zero, it would mean that this would be true. Uh, it, it would mean that when when you put um, when you put a into here, this whole thing here will be zero, which is this bit here. And then uh, when when you put a into here, uh, this whole thing here will be zero. So for you to have a zero over zero scenario, it would mean that this thing must be zero, and then g of uh, g of a must be zero. So, so if you look at this here, this is what we, we're trying to find out. This function, uh, g, uh, g, sorry, this function f of x over g of x. So this is our function here at the moment. The thing is dead on a, dead on a, it breaks down. It breaks down because we've got zero over zero. So we are trying to find out the limit of this. Okay. But, uh, but, um, but at the moment, for you to have a scenario of zero over zero, it would, it would, it would mean that this thing must be zero, meaning this is zero. And then it would mean that when you put a into here, this thing here would be zero. So, so this thing here is zero. So now starting, starting from here, we are going to somehow get to here. Okay. So, so let's start, let's start from here. So starting from here. So starting from here. So starting from here. We're, we're, so, so here you've got a, a, a fraction. With a fraction, you can divide top and bottom by the same thing. Here we're going to divide, divide top and bottom by x minus a, x minus a. So we're dividing a fraction top and bottom by the same thing. So that will then give us this. So this thing here will then give us this. And then this thing here will then give us this. So we, we are basically dividing top and bottom by the same thing. Okay, so so now um, now look, looking at this, looking at this here. Hang on, for you to have a scenario zero over zero, it would mean that f of a is zero, g of a is zero. So so we are currently here. We are currently here because this thing here is this, and this thing here is this. So now looking at this, I'm just going to take away zero here. I'm, 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 we are entitled to take away zero, uh, and this is a trick that we've used in the past. We are simply taking away zero here. Look at this. Well, zero, this thing here is zero here. For for our scenario, when when you have zero, when you have a scenario where it's zero over zero, it would imply that f of a equals zero. So 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 for us to take away zero, we are really taking away f of a. So we are taking away f of a we are taking away this f of a here okay so so let's start again let's start again uh we we started out with this we we started out with this we are going to divide top and bottom by the same thing by x minus a by x by x minus a so that would then take us to uh to here that would then take us to here here because this divided by x minus a that will give you this this divided by x minus a, that would then give you this. Then, we are going to take away 0 here. We are going to take away 0 here. But don't forget 0, don't forget 0 is f of a. Uh, yeah, f of a. And, and 0 here, because, look at this. f of a is 0. And remember, g of a is also 0 here. So, uh, so, so we are taking away 0 here. So, well, 0 is... 0 is g is also g of a so 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 from here from here we are going to take away 0 here and then take away 0 here that would then take us to here that would then take us to here 
Now the minute the minute you see this, you should recognize that this here is f prime of x. And then the minute you see this, uh, this is uh, remember this is in the in the previous video. I I asked you to be able to recognize that when when this thing here is tending to zero, which it is, as x tends to um, to a here, this will be zero. So the minute you see this in the previous video, I asked you to to be able to recognize that the minute you see this, you can jump to f prime of of x because this thing here is in effect in effect moving towards zero because because it's saying get x to move towards a well as x as this x move towards a then this thing here will be zero so 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 this thing here is f prime of x and then if you look at this here this is uh, this is g prime of x so uh, so from here that will then take us to here so really it, it, it is what we we set out to so so this thing here is is hang on it is this thing here so um, I, well I hope you can see it okay so this thing here you can simply differentiate the top you can simply differentiate the bottom okay